Hey guys, welcome to my channel, Realm of Ori. In this video, we will continue with Volume 15, Chapter 5, The Truth of the Emperor, Part 1. And before we start, this video contains spoilers from the Tensura Light Novel. And by the way guys, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon to get notifications for upcoming videos. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Damrata is inside of one of the eight gates. And then, now, a sweetly smiling maiden appeared in front of Damrata's eyes. This fearsomely powerful girl is one of the world's most powerful corners, one of the seven demon pillars known as the Primordials. Ultima, a subordinate of the demon lord Rimuru, is her name. Not only to make the Primordial his own men, but also to strengthen them. Ah ha ha, did you notice that? Yes, lord Rimuru has given us power, and we are presently in excellent condition. Granting power to a primordial was not something that an ordinary demon lord could accomplish, despite what one might anticipate. Even Guy Crimson and his men, the primordials, did not evolve. With this perspective, it's easy to see how unusual demon lord Rimuru's actions were. Damrata, on the other hand, had no intention of losing. To keep the bargain with Rudra, it was important to fight all out against this demon known as Ultima. I don't always select the most sensible option, even if it's a difficult one as long as the end result fulfills my goal. Damrata's agony was over. Damrata posed fearlessly even after watching Ultima, who had exhibited incredible strength. Well, I guess it's time for a fight. It's entirely normal. I will make my strength known to you as His Majesty's Knight. That sounds exciting, so let's get started. The struggle between the rank 2 Damrata's single-digit sequence and the Pain Lord Ultima begins. Ultima let out a short snort and looked at Damrata. Damrata felt the enormous force of being human and stood out even amid the saints. The uninterrupted stance gave the impression that victory would have been unattainable without evolution. Isn't it the same one? It appears to be on par with Hanada's. That individual appears to be a natural opponent of a magical creature, and he gives the impression of exclusively refining his talents in person-to-person -person communication. This type is extremely difficult to identify. Ultima has encountered opponents who have honed their skills. Hakuro is an excellent illustration of a person who can deal with a wide range of problems using a thousand different skills. Ultima is an existence that exists at the apex of the demon race. She has known how to utilize magic since she was a child, perfect magical dominance. Only outstanding beings of the same class, such as the primordial or the dragon race, could conceivably outperform themselves, and Ultima had thought this until lately. This perception, however, is incorrect. Ultima knew she had made a mistake during the battle with Velgrind. In the face of Velgrind's overwhelming high-level presence, Ultima and others fought valiantly and managed to knock out one of her other bodies, but with only 10% of her previous strength. On the other hand, another lesson learned is that if you use power incorrectly, you will lose against a weaker opponent. The true dragon race, already the most powerful race on the planet, has demonstrated sophisticated magical abilities, and as a result, the Ultima, a race that prides itself on magic, has been overwhelmed by magic. Ultima had no idea why it could during the combat, but it could now. The key is to combine magic with an ultimate skill. Ultima had never wanted to achieve power despite being one of the strongest, but she hoped to do so this time. Ultima recognized herself as the youngest of the seven pillars of primordiality. Even yet, fighting Mazari and Rhein on an equal footing was doable. She would feel defeated by Testarossa and Carrera if she fought with all her strength. If you think about it, Ultima and Carrera have a lot in common, thus they've been fighting each other for a long time. Carrera has recently developed a passion for swordplay. Ultima was quite envious. Such musings, however, have come to a stop today. Ultima, who was fortunate enough to get the opportunity to awaken, obtained power exactly as she had wished. Ultima had been praying while watching the Battle of Agera, and at the end of her concentration, she heard an astounding voice, I'll assist you in making this wish come true. The power of the King of Poisonous Death, the ultimate skill, is the capacity to see through the weaknesses of diverse living entities and then flexibly employ the proper state alterations to generate poison. Ultima believed she had no chance of losing now that she had this ability. However, Ultima immediately remembered something. Hone yourself and don't rely on strength too much, Diablo usually advises. She assumed Diablo would always have this kind of zero talk due of his previous defeat to Zijin, and she interpreted it as a caustic remark from Diablo, who had a poor character. Ultima had misunderstood the situation. There was some irony in it, but it was largely for her benefit. It can be extremely different depending on how the strength is used, as Diablo taught us. She remembered what Diablo had said after she realized this. 
it's true that simply relying on the power that has been granted will not bring it to its full potential. Ultima now emphatically agrees with this statement. Then I'll do the same, Ultima says, eager to take advantage of this opportunity to feed herself. Damrata is a man who can't afford to be sloppy, therefore he goes all out. Even though Damrata was a powerful opponent, Ultima saw him as nothing more than a practice opponent. The fighting was intense. Strength boosted the attack was fired by Ultima, but Damrata was able to deflect it with his own skill. The attack can sometimes be instantly countered by concentrating the entire body's fighting chi. Damrata's strength comes from his deft and swift improvisation. Ultima was genuinely impressed and amused by this. Many things were realized as a result of the encounter with Damrata. They were evenly matched in strength and couldn't tell whether they were going to win or lose. Oh, how delightful. You can't possibly go this long without practicing against Zijin. From the depths of a delightful Ultima, Damrata, on the other hand, was bitter. By treating the match with me as an exercise, you're underestimating me. Despite his claims, Damrata noticed it on the inside. If this continues, he will be the one to suffer. Damrata is in full swing, and Ultima is still rising. There was no time to enjoy the excitement of the combat. All he could concentrate about was how to defeat Ultima and employ all of his skills in the conflict. The more I attack, the more I expose myself, yet even a powerful talent may not be enough. Couldn't. Win, could you? He reasoned that it would be wiser to make rapid work of it, given that Ultima could master a talent that Damrata had carefully learned with a single glimpse, but doing so would surely disclose a fault that would be self-defeating. Even if it was previously feasible to counteract all of Ultima's many assaults of equal power at the same time. Wow, that was like a demonstration. Damrata, on the other hand, was disappointed. Damrata had become desperate. Ultima appeared to be absorbing water from the dry sand, and she was clearly expanding. Damrata had never considered the primordial, since it was so terrifying. To the untrained eye, the two appear to be evenly balanced. This balance, however, will soon break down, and as long as one side continues to develop, the scales will eventually tip in favor of the other. At a depressing reality, the moment has arrived. Aha! We're almost there. Ultima's aura altered abruptly, indicating that she had been saving her last strength in order to steal Damrata's abilities. Ultima spread six pairs of wings behind her, featherless as bat wings, smooth and sensuous with a lavender light, no longer maintaining strength. Here we go. Following Ultima's declaration, the twelve wings moved in unison, morphing into various shapes and aimed for Damrata to unleash the strike. Thin as a razor, sharp like a steel needle, gathered into fist-like bits, flexible and shifting wings. Damrata was blown away the minute he made contact with the fist-like wings, and the strength contained therein was unprecedented, a strong force that Damrata could not fight. Ah ha ha, this is a fantastic appearance. Ha, huh, little girl, don't underestimate others. The power is incredible, but I'm not going to be hit. Damrata continued to hold his breath, concentrated on avoiding the attack. One of the wings threaded Damrata's legs, and while it appeared that Damrata didn't have a chance to avoid it, it was actually a Damrata ploy. Ven Ultima would have been careless if she had been certain that she would win, a move that Damrata had made with that in mind. Do you keep running around like that? Or have you had enough of running? Ultima paused the attack and began to tease Damrata, the wings aiming to hit through her opponent's limbs rather than the important areas. Damrata was confident that his plan had worked. A full force shot was fired at Ultima when she was making a wounded fall motion. This is the sure fire aura of Damrata. This is a blow that uses the power of substitution to refine all of a saint's fighting force. If the creature is hit by this move, it will be annihilated, regardless of how powerful it is, and even the primal Ultima will collapse and perish. Damrata, who declared himself victorious, was unaffected by victory's repercussions. A horrible cold ran through him at the prospect of stabbing Ultima with a lethal blow. Only a bit of wing remained, the one that had morphed into the shape of Ultima, and Damrata failed to see it. It was too late by the time this was discovered. Poisonous death punch. Ultima managed to pierce Damrata's chest. She fought in a cross hands posture, imitating Damrata's massive magical strength concentrated in her hands, and accomplished this method perfectly by unleashing the ultimate power, King of Poisonous Death. Damrata passed out after coughing up blood. What a pity. Exactly what we expected. A devilish roar of laughter erupted. Damrata tries to get back up, but he fails horribly. I can't even stand, let alone clinch my fists. Despite this, he continued to stare Ultima down with all his force and rage. That's a slam, not a punch. Is it possible to mimic that after only viewing it once? However, the prowess is undeniable, truly outstanding. 
To summarize, the moniker, the Red Snake Death Poisoner, would be more accurate. When Damrata hits the ground, it faces the sky. <laughs>